Hi everyone. The video today is not only for our first responders and essential employees, but for anyone that might have a weird shift, um, has a job where they can't always count on lunch or dinner break. Uh, this is for anyone that, without pre-planning for the day and the packing a lunch, are at the mercy of gas station sandwiches, uh, 7-Elevens, or destined to starve the entire shift. Before I get to this, um, I just wanted to say whether you are new or a, a long-time member of the group, whether you're active and you post advice or you sit quietly and you read, uh, it's all good. It's who you are. Uh, it's, if you're offering advice, it may be good that uh, you live what you teach. I was on my way to work yesterday on the radio. I heard an old song from 1975 called Junk Food Junkie. If you haven't heard it, it's, uh, you should probably look it up. It's, it's actually pretty funny. It's the tale of a guy who's referred to as Mr. Natural um, during the day. And at night up in his room, he's got a safe that's filled with ding-dongs and everything else. And he eats that stuff until he passes out. Um, I just want to say, people can always spot a junk food junkie if you are one. And uh, if you're going to talk the talk, then it's kind of important to walk the walk. So um, practice what you preach. Now, I'm not perfect, and I'll never claim that I am. And unlike what was said uh, earlier, uh, that I must be making these videos out of some need for attention, well, some people may post out of some twisted need for attention, but it's not me. Uh, in fact, I'm a very private person. Uh, I give enough of myself to the public five days a week, and when I'm in uniform, I get more attention than I want. But something in me still wants to help everyone. And uh, I'm genuine. If you see me in a supermarket, I invite you to come over and take a look at what I'm buying in my shopping cart. Take a look. As a matter of fact, um, I would love to meet you. And uh, if, if that ever happens, I would love for you to come over and say hi, because I really am approachable. I think whether you're online or in person, you should be the same person and kind to everyone. Uh, one of the good things that came out of COVID, at least for me, was the move to mandated support groups online rather than in person. Uh, now we can sit in privacy of our own homes and the comfort and watch Jane and her guests kind of uh, inspire us without any issues. Uh, one thing I, I do want to say before I get to today's exciting video, which is truly exciting, uh, which brings me to the point was my first mandated meeting in Hartford on Wednesday, uh, February 19th at 6 p.m. It was on Hudson Street. I got there a little early and I found this large auditorium type room and I'm not really sure where I should sit. So I walk in, there's this big room and, and I really, it's, it's scary because it's like your first day at school and you're the new kid and you're here with all these veterans that have been there for so long. Well. As uncomfortable as I was, um, I, I walked in and there was this person sitting at this large table and uh, they were just kind of looking through some stuff. And I sat down at that table and I said, hello, you know, good evening. And they looked at me with this shocked, disgusted look like, <sighs> and I was like, <laughs> uh-oh. And the person goes, oh, no, 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 no. This table is reserved for people that have already had the surgery and members of my Facebook group, uh, blah, 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 some stupid name or something. So you need to leave, followed by a... <laughs> I was like, okay, so this is how it's going to be. And I ended up getting up and sitting at another table, and I, I really met this wonderful woman that uh, the two of us had a whole table to ourselves. Um, but anyway, I, after that, I, I pleaded with Jane Sweeney and Dr. Tischler to please excuse me from having to attend these meetings, and I was denied. Uh, but anyway, for me, um, 
I, I'm much happier with the, the meetings now and I can kick back and if I if it's a bad time for me I don't have to break away from my day I can always go back and watch the recap so I guess what I'm saying is this group is made up of a whole variety of different people different races different genders different sexual preferences different styles of eating we got vegans we got carnivores I mean everybody is different but I will say that no one person is better than the other I'm not better than anybody else and nobody else is better than anybody else. We're all unique and we're all different. And we're all here with one purpose in mind and that is to get healthy, to eat healthy, and to do better and to learn about how to do that. Now there'll be some good things and some bad things. Let's keep the good things and bypass the bad things. That's all I got to say about any of that. But anyway, uh, much better now. Let's get to um, the video where we're going to help out everybody with crazy schedules and first responders. And I'm going to start this off by um, uh, packing up these little individual 5-ounce containers. Um, these are things that if you pre-plan, you're going to be good to go. Uh, one person on the group mentioned uh, they like that seafood, artificial seafood salad, and I really like that too, but it seems to be really high in, in carbs and fat. And uh, I was looking for a healthier way to do that at the store the other day, so I found uh, some artificial lobster meat, which is the same as the crab meat, which is just truly monkfish. But um, I'm going to put that together right now with a um, little bit of yogurt even a smaller amount of mayonnaise and some salt and pepper and a little bit of onion and I think I could excuse me I think I could make it healthier but let's take a look at what we can put in our lunch bags to get us through those days where you don't even know if you're going to get a lunch all right first up is the lobster salad I got this lobster classic mix um it is still kind of high, high on carbs I think it's uh, 11 grams for a half cup and I don't think that there's really any fiber or anything else, but uh, it's still better than the store-bought pre-made. So it's, it's basically just chunked up monkfish. Uh, that's about all it is. And to that I also added some chopped onion. I would like to add some celery, but I didn't have any on hand. And this is just a quick prep for uh, my dinner uh, tomorrow while I'm at work. So I'm going to add to this a little bit of black pepper. And uh, you can do this the night before and let it sit overnight. You can do it a couple days before. It's, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to add some chives. You can add whatever things that you like in there. You could add Cajun seasoning, whatever you'd like. Um, this is just basically what I'm going with. Uh, I've got some tarragon leaves here. And I'm going to uh, sprinkle those about. Now, to moisten all of this, I usually use 5% yogurt. Um, this is kind of all just in there, lumped together. But I didn't have any on hand, and all I had was a 0%. Um, and it's really thick. It's almost like wall spackle paste. So I, I don't like it, but I'm, I'm going to go with it anyway. I probably used a little more than I wanted to, but... Um, for this application, I would say probably half a container uh, would have been proper. I probably used um, a little more than half, almost three quarters. And mixing it up is a tough thing to do. It's, it's, it, it is. It's like glue. It's like paste. Um, and I know I'm not making it sound very appealing, but it is. The, its main job is to moisten up this, uh, this stuff. Now, um, to add flavor. So, with flavor is fat, so we're going to go with um, uh, some Sir Kensington uh, classic mayonnaise. They have avocado mayonnaise as well. This is made with sunflower oil. It's got the healthier ingredients of the two. But um, I add a, a big tablespoon of that, and I'm just going to kind of blend it in like this, and I'm going to mix it up. So, it's going to take over the taste of the non-taste of the yogurt. Um, so, we've got all the moistness and goodness that we want 
but it doesn't have the high fat content as if we were soaking it in mayonnaise, especially like the store-bought. I'll give it a quick taste. And uh, what I determined after tasting it is it's going to need a little bit of salt. Uh, that's the only thing I was missing. So I'm going to add some sea salt to that and uh, continue to mix it up. Now, this is going to travel really easily, and I'm going to scoop it up, and I'm going to put it into the um, smaller containers. So let's just get to that. Now here I've got a 5-ounce container. It comes with the lid. I bought these on Amazon. Um, you know, to be earth-friendly, I probably should be using uh, uh, reusable, like the, the Tupperware. But... Um, to be honest with you, I just don't get around to cleaning it. Uh, I end up just tossing this. But um, anyway, <clears throat> I'll pack up the salad into these and I'll snap the lid on. And these travel really well inside a container. And it's usually about four to five ounces of uh, food inside here. Uh, let me measure it up really quick and uh, we'll see what we got. Let's drop it on the scale. And that one container is four and five eighths ounces. Now, using the same container that we did the lobster salad in, or the artificial lobster salad, I'm going to mix some tuna salad. So I've got this large can of uh, um, tuna, a solid uh, white albacore in water. And I'm going to just get that in the bowl. And I also have, along with this, two other cans, a uh, different brand. But also it's uh, the, the fancy albacore tuna. I get whatever's on sale at uh, BJ's or uh, at the supermarket if it's on sale. So we're just going to put this right into the same container. I mean, I would love to add celery too, but I didn't have any on hand. Uh, so I got to use what I got. Uh, because I'm the only one that'll be eating this, uh, I don't mind using my own hand uh, without a glove. So I'm just going to bust everything up with my hands. And once I got it busted up, I'm going to use what's left of that uh, uh, yogurt that I had, the 0%. Uh, I should have used had half a container, but I used a little bit too much in the lobster. So um, I'm going to try to spread this around as best as I can, but I'm going to make up for the lack of moisture, um, still kind of pasty, by adding a spicy brown mustard. And uh, I'm gonna give that, uh, the Sir Kensington's I like, um, it's like pretzel mustard, but I give it a pretty good coat. I'm gonna squirt some in there. And that also adds a flavor. And I'm gonna throw in some uh, uh, organic lemon juice. And I'm going to put in a tablespoon and maybe a half just to finish up the jar. Um, there's there's like nothing left inside the jar so I'm, I'm just going to use up what's left of that with the mayonnaise and I'm going to add some black pepper get that in there and what else we got I'm going to do some tarragon and I'm going to put a, you know, a good eh, portion of a palmful in there I, I just love the, the the fresh taste and the, the flavor and the scent of tarragon. It's almost got like a little licorice uh, flavor to it. And I'm going to add some granulated garlic. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there uh, because, like, you know, it's tuna. And what else have I got around here? Um, maybe a little bit of sea salt just to get it in there because that, that yogurt really does suck any of the... the it doesn't have any seasoning or salt to it or anything. It's just, it's like paste. Um, so I've got this mixed up pretty well. Uh, I did add, I don't know if it's going to be on the video here. I don't think so. But I did add some sweet onion, uh, chopped sweet onion in there. And again, no celery. So I've got my cups out again. And I'm just going to fill these cups up. This is going to make about uh, five uh, of these cups and I think they average right around uh, a little over five ounces when I weigh them now these are great to have in the bag because you can um, have them um, eat them with a fork you can have some 
like crackers if you want a few little crackers here and there and you can eat, put them on crackers uh, whatever but you can always come back to it so here I've got five uh, tuna salads and five ounce containers and I got three of the lobster salad and five ounce containers and these are ready to go in the fridge now we move on to another great standby. I get these at Big Y. They're the big rotisserie chickens. Um, I have bought them from other stores, like uh, uh, discount stores, and they were really weird. I've I've gotten into them, and I've there's like tumors inside the meat and stuff. So I'm I'm really leery about chicken, but uh, I've had no problem with the Big Y chickens. I guess you get what you pay for. <laughs> so. I'm going to break this all down just with my gloved hand and show you how easy it's going to be. Um, I'm going to reach underneath the first breast here and kind of feel with my fingers and I'm going to pop that right out. And the reason I like to do this with my bare hands is I don't like surprise bones. I want to feel for the bones and you'll be able to easily feel for them uh, with your hands and be able to pull them. So uh, I'm going to work one side of the chicken at a time here, and I'm going to grab up any of the meat that's, that's loose. But for the most part, it all came up with that one shot. Now I'm going to grab the other one, and again, I'm pulling up and cl clearing out. There is uh, a little bit of bone. I can feel it with my hand, and I can get it out of there because nobody wants to be choking on a chicken bone. So um, get those and I just put them aside in the upper lid and now I've got the two large breasts out and I'm going to be picking through and, and looking actually for any other um, uh, tasty meat. The legs I'm going to bust and I'm going to put them aside uh, at um, a later time. I'm going to pull all of the meat off of that and I'm not a big dark meat person so I usually I find it kind of like greasy and oily. Um, but I will use it to accompany some of the white meat and a chicken salad. So I will put that all aside and I'll eventually get the meat off of that bone. But I'm dealing with just pretty much the carcass now. So underneath here, a lot of people forget this little oyster under here. Um, this is a very tender little piece of chicken. It's like the size of a coin. And usually it's reserved for the chef, but uh, there it is. It's, it's so tasty. There's one on each side. And it's tender, and they say it's the best part of the chicken, but uh, it's debatable. But anyway, uh, now that I've got this uh, all broken apart, um, I'll start getting to work on the actual breast itself. Um, I don't need a knife. I'm just going to pull it and shred it. Um, there's so much you can do with this. You can put this on salads. You can... Um, eat it by itself. Uh, you can make chicken sandwiches on the uh, either on lettuce leaves or you can put them in low carb wraps or you can put them on the low carb uh, toast like I do. Um, so much you can do with the chicken and you can just wrap it up and send it and you got a quick sandwich you can carry in your hand and you can woof it down um, if you have to when you're you're running out of time at work. Um, you can also make the chicken salad, and just like the tuna salad, uh, you can. It's so much you can do with this chicken, and it's really a great tool to have. Now, another tip I have is dinner time. If you're going to be cleaning and prepping shrimp, and you're going to put them on skewers. By the way, this is the proper way to skewer shrimp to keep them moist. Um, make extra because you're going to want some of that for a quick meal. I mean, you're going to go through the trouble of cleaning it and cooking it. Make some extra. Now, I've already sprayed a little bit of uh, olive oil on there, and I've added some Cajun seasoning, and I've sprinkled it on both sides, and I put it on skewers. So this is going to be ready for the grill. Now, before we rush out to the grill, I've got a tablespoon of butter here. And uh, to that, and, and I have the grill preheated to 400 degrees so um, to that I'm going to add some uh, organic lemon juice and we're going to use this as a base to uh, just wipe onto the shrimp and I don't have fresh garlic so I'm going to use some granulated garlic and I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to pop this in the microwave so once it's melted I stir it up and I just kind of base the shrimp with that butter garlic lemon goodness so now we are ready to head out. 
So now that we're outside, um, I've got a hot dog on here for another family member that wanted didn't want shrimp. And uh, I'm going to put that right out there and I'm going to lay it down onto the hot grate. Now this is a wood smoking uh, grill and uh, it's got uh, wood pellets that's burning that were made from crushed uh, Jim Beam bourbon barrels. So I mean it's it's pretty pretty tasty. So I've just basted it and I'm going to leave it in there for three minutes. So the three minutes is up. I'm going to open it and I'm going to give them a flip. They're already starting to get a little bit of that orange color to them and a little bit of char on the other side. So we're going to flip these right over here and I'm going to close up the smoker grill and it needs a, I'm going to baste it first but it leaves such a nice smoky uh, flavor to this. Oh, so good. So I'm going to just use the rest of that garlic butter sauce and lemon and three more minutes. So magic of television, three minutes is up and I'm going to pull everything off of the grill. So it's looking good. I've got the beautiful shrimp kebabs and they're nice and tender. And look at that. Wow. The hardest part was cleaning them. So I'll grab the hot dog and close it up and let's go plate the shrimp. So we're going to go back inside here now and I'm just going to lay that shrimp right down there on the plate. And uh, it's already weighed out. It's, it's this thing all the whole plate together is probably about four and a half ounces. So I've got a little bit of cell, uh, coleslaw. I like to use my own but I had to use store bought because I'm rushed. And I used a little bit of chive. And there you go. That's a great dinner and we have extra. Okay, so let's play pretend. I like to play pretend. So we've got my lunch bag and it's now lunch time. Out of some of the options that we've made, um, let's decide what we're gonna do for lunch. We've only got about 10 minutes out of a half hour that we have that we can eat. So I'm looking at my lunch pail and I've got a couple different options. Do I want to try the tuna? Do I want to have this with uh, maybe put on some crackers or uh, put on a piece of bread that I had or a wrap? Um, am I in the mood for tuna? Maybe I want some of that lobster salad. That fit in there really nicely. Quick, easy, five ounces, good to get. How about that rotisserie chicken the other day? Or leftover piece of grilled chicken? Great thing to have. You can eat it quickly. But what I'm going to decide to eat for my 10 minutes is I'm going to have some leftover shrimp. And I'm going to have a little bit of leftover coleslaw. So, I've only got 10 minutes. So I'm going to sit here. I've got three pieces of shrimp. And I've got some coleslaw. So first, Let's get the shrimp that we took all that time to clean and everything yesterday. Mmm. Mmm. Still got that smoky goodness. Mmm. Hands down. Beat 7-Eleven. Have some coleslaw. No. So you only have five minutes. <clears throat> Another option you should always have in your bag. It's like one of those protein shakes. That's gonna get that's gonna buy you four hours. Right now, having shrimp. I don't have the timer going. But I'm taking my time. And I'm feeling satisfied. Mm. 
Let me speed up the 10 minutes for you. There you have it. Quick lunch. It's better to be prepared than not have anything at all. Because otherwise, people are bringing in donuts or bringing in other crap. Somebody's going to be making a run to Chick fil A or some uh, all night burger place or something. You don't want to be starving yourself. You don't want to be hungry. You don't want to be forced into making bad choices. So hopefully, this helped you out. A um, million different options. You can change this up to uh, egg salad. Anything you want for dinner. Um, when you make dinner, make extra. You know, even meatballs. Uh, you can you can slice them and 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 eat them. I mean, anything that reheats uh, quickly and easily, or or you can eat cold, and it will get you through the shift. It's not too hard to pull the stuff out of the fridge, and the key is it's already pre-made. You've already got this, and it's going to hold any of those things that I, excuse me, any of the things that I made are going to sit in the fridge for at least a week. It's okay. So you look and you say, what do I got? Well, I want this. Maybe I want the tuna, but you know what? Maybe I'm not going to want the tuna tonight. Maybe I'm going to want the, the, the lobster salad. Or I'm going to want the grilled chicken. Put it all in the bag. It's all going to fit. It's light. And then you eat what you have. You've got your choices. And then whatever's left over, you got ice packs in here. Bring it back home, stick it back in the fridge, and you're good to go. And then on the weekend, anything that's left over, that's what you can have for your lunches or dinners. But um, I hope this helps. And uh, let me know what you think.